Okay, so in this video I'm going to describe how you take geodetic uh, municipal files, uh, in this case they're going to be DWG files, how we bring those into Revit so that we actually can leverage the 3D nature and the specific very accurate geodetics. I'm going to start in AutoCAD and I'm going to be using uh, files that have been provided by our local municipal organization. Just a heads up, I generally try to make these videos as sort of broad audience as possible, um, but I won't be able to supply all of these files in the YouTube link. So it's just the nature of our sort of agreement with um, the City of Calgary, I can't post these. So you'll have access to them, of course, by way of your link to D2L, but I won't be able to provide these files, the, these DWG files, uh, in the link in the YouTube video. So having said that, uh, I'm going to just navigate to where those files are located. And uh, I've already determined what part of the city I'm looking at here. I've found the appropriate file. I've requested the files. And uh, now I'm just going to start with the DWG. And the host file is the one that has 3P at the start. So the 22 next to that just indicates the spot on the land use bylaw map. Uh, but the 3P is kind of where I link everything in. So I'm going to start by opening that. And I'm just going to do away with the prompts here about uh, where the file came from. And uh, I can see here that I've got a lot of things in here already, some streets, some curbs, most importantly some contours. And I'm just going to type in X, R, E, F. And this brings up, of course, my X ref and file reference dialog box. And all I'm going to do here is just a confirmation that I've got the right path to all these files. So 3P, of course, is the host file. It displays the normal AutoCAD icon, but the rest of these need to just sort of be properly linked. So if I click on existing developments, down here below I can see that I've got uh, a reference here to where the file is. To repair any sort of broken links, I just click on the little dot, the little box here with the three dots. And then I just make sure I navigate to the spot where this existing developments file is. It happens to be the file that has uh, O at the start. So I'll just click there. That one's now fixed and I just work my way down here finding the one that says legal boundaries. This is the one that has the similar sort of file name with the L at the start. And then I'll do the same thing for sanitary, storm, and water. And once I've got these all placed, then I'll just do a regular save, not a save as. And Revit will be able, when I get this file into Revit, when I import the CAD data, Revit will be able to find all of the XREF items as well. So I won't have to worry about going through this process in Revit once I get it there. So just the last one here, this is the drawing that shows me all of the water lines. And there we go. So everything now is properly linked. All the XREFs have their file paths uh, described. So now I'll just click on the regular quick save button here. And now I'm going to jump into Revit. So when I go to Revit, I'm assuming that I'm just going to do this right from, right from scratch, a brand new file. And I'm going to go to the option here for a new file. And it's going to ask me which template file I want. I'm going to use the regular default US Canada template. It's simple, it's metric, it only has two levels in it, it doesn't have a bunch of unnecessary stuff that I don't need. So I'll click OK. And as it usually does, it takes me to a level one floor plan view. So in preparation for bringing this geodetic data in, uh, I'm actually gonna go to the site plan first and just make sure that I adjust my view range so that I can see the full extent of this 3D file when it comes in. So in my site, plan view, which I access by clicking here in my project browser. I'm just going to type in V and R. And I'm going to change the top here to 9 million. Now that sounds like an obscure number, I know, 9 and 6 zeros. Uh, if I try to do anything larger than that, uh, for some reason there's this obscure maximum of 9,144,000. Can't go any higher than that. All I'm doing here is I'm just describing the height of these view range elements in terms of millimeters. And I want to make sure that I've got enough view range so that when I bring something in that's a thousand meters above sea level, I'll be able to see it in my site plan view. 
If I click OK here, nothing will change. Uh, it's just in preparation for when I bring in that 3D file. So before I do that, I want to just jump back to AutoCAD real quick and just make a point about the kind of data that we're bringing in. Uh, this is something you may have never noticed before, but in AutoCAD, uh, if I just click over here in the upper right on this little corner of the view queue, I'll be able to go to a 3D orientation and see that although we tend to think of AutoCAD as a 2D program, all of this data, as you can see, has a Z value to it. So I've got a lot of layers down here that are just right at the zero level, just horizontal and flat and two-dimensional. But I've got some topo surface contours up above here that if I rotate around and orbit around, you can see have some relief to them. So there's a, a three-dimensional component to this. When I bring this into Revit, I want all of this 3D data to be tracked so that I can create a topo surface on it. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to go to a 3D view. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because this file is going to come in and be a little bit on the large side. And then I'm just going to go to Insert. And I'm going to link the CAD file. So if I click on Link CAD and then navigate to that DWG file, I want to make sure here, don't just double click on it and open it up. You have to catch a few things here in the Link CAD formats dialog. So what we want to do is we want to make sure the colors are preserved. We want all of the layers. And this is really important. This one often gets overlooked. Remember that the import units have to be set to meter. If you don't do this, all of those pink contour lines are not going to be 1,000 meters above sea level. They're going to be more like 30 or 40 or 50 meters above. Uh, they won't be in the right spot. So preserve the colors, all the layers, import units is meter, uncheck the box that says correct lines that are slightly off axis. We don't need that checked. And then the positioning is going to be auto center to center. I'll click open. It's going to think a little bit and find the file. And then it'll come in looking pretty much like it looked in AutoCAD. Of course, I've got a white background now for Revit. But uh, you can see that it's preserved all of the three-dimensional data. I've got the topo surfaces, in this case, lying a little bit more than 1,000 meters above, which happens to be a million millimeters. Keep that in mind. And with this in place, I can now just go directly to the topo surface creation. So on my Massing in Sight tab, I can click Topo Surface. And then rather than the typical method, which is to just create points manually, the other option I have here is to create from import. So if I select import instance, I can then click on the AutoCAD file, and it's about to make the 3D topo surface out of the data that I brought in the DWG file. Uh, trouble here initially, though, is I've got way more information than I need for that uh, command. So you can see that it's got all the layers here from the DWG file. I'm going to click on this button. Luckily, I don't have to go through here and manually uncheck them. Just click Check None. And there's 11 layers that I want to use here. Anything that says anything about contours. So index contour, and then you can see the description here of the intervals. So all of these index contour and also intermediate contour layers. There's 10 of them. And there's one more further down here called spot heights. Don't choose the one that says Spot Heights Text. So after you've selected those 11 layers, you can click OK. And this is going to start actually working out how to make a Revit topple surface. This means also that we won't have to rely on the 3D AutoCAD data any longer. We'll still leave it in the file, but there will be times where we can hide it so that we're not constantly having to refresh that data on our screens. So initially, it looks like this. And if I click on the green check, It'll finish the creation of the topo surface. Initially, it's not going to look like anything has happened here. And if I want to see the results, all I have to do is just click down here on the visual style option and choose shaded. And then with that earth color here, that earth material, you can see that I've now created an element that wasn't there before. And this is the Revit topo surface. So that's the initial creation of the Revit topo surface. Um, if I now go to the site plan, and zoom out. Again, it'll look like it's just the AutoCAD file. Uh, but if I was to switch here to the shaded style, you'd see, again, that brown sort of earth material. So just confirmation that I've got a Revit topple surface here now. So 
what I've done, of course, is I've tried to create a simulation of what my site might look like. Rather than just sort of arbitrarily drawing my building down at zero, which is what we tend to do when we're not thinking about the site, I've now provided some real world, realistic, accurate information about where my site actually sits in relation to zero, which in this case would be sea level. Now, what I want to do ultimately is when I begin sort of creating the building elements, the walls and the doors and the roofs and everything else, uh, I want those to actually be at the point that they would be at on the site at whatever the given meters above sea level would be. Uh, initially, that's not going to happen. In my south elevation view, you can see that if I zoom down here, my level lines are exactly where they were before. They're right down at zero and 4,000. And here's my topo surface way up here at the actual geodetic height, whatever, 1,000 meters above sea level. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to my site view again and I'm going to switch this back to hidden line so I don't uh, see the distraction of the uh, brown earth material and I want to change this actually um, instead of hidden line sorry I'm going to change this to wireframe when you change it to wireframe it allows you to see through the topo surface and then you'll be able to see all of the AutoCAD data and as an example here, just a sample file, I'm going to use this property number five in this development. And what I want to pull out of here initially is just sort of a mental note about where my building will be roughly. I'm going to look at the upper corner here and look for a geodetic. And I see that uh, this particular spot elevation is 1270 meters uh, above sea level. So I'll just kind of remember that generally uh, this corner of my site is around 1,270 meters. And then down in this corner, uh, this geodetic indicates that I'm at about 1,268 and a bit. So just to kind of do some initial placement and some initial sort of uh, iterative work, I'm just going to kind of split the difference. And I'm going to say that the main floor of my building is going to be partway between those two. So I'm going to say that 1,269 meters above sea level is the geodetic height of my main floor. Now, what I'm also going to do here before I actually move the elevation markers in place is I'm going to change the location of my survey point and my base point. And I find those right in the middle of this AutoCAD file. So there's that strange looking kind of circular and triangular uh, set of icons. I'm going to select the project base point and I want to move it up to my property. So I click there. And I have to remember to just click on this little paper clip. If I don't do that, when I move the base point, the AutoCAD file is going to go with it. So if I just click here to strike the paper clip out, then I can use the Move tool and just kind of manually take this base point and put it in about the corner spot here where I think that I'm going to be placing my building. Obviously, I won't know exactly where that's going to be yet, but just to kind of begin the process, uh, I'm going to put it in a sort of rough guess spot. I'm going to do the same thing here with the uh, survey point as well. So select it, click on the paper clip so that you can move it independently, and then I'm going to manually move that up to about the same spot. Uh, for what we're doing, the base point is more important than the survey point, uh, but we're just going to put them relatively close to each other. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of those elevation views and they can be a little hard to spot. So you have to just kind of remember where they were in the file. You can see that I've got those four elevation views in these spots right here. I'm going to grab those and move them up to approximately where my building will be. Um, just so that I don't accidentally grab the AutoCAD file and move it, I'm going to click the AutoCAD file and then use the pin command just so that it's kind of locked in place and doesn't accidentally move on me. So I pin that down. And then I can safely select all four of these elevation markers. And if I want to confirm that I've only got elevation markers, I can use my filter. And there's confirmation I have four elevation markers, four views. That's good. That's safe. And then I'll just manually, not using any particular snapping points, just clicking right in the middle, move those over to a spot that's closer where my building is going to be. And this is all pretty rough. We'll fine tune it in just a moment here. So with all of that done, I'm now ready to move my level datum lines up to the point that actually reflects 
uh, meters above sea level. To do that, I'm going to click on my south elevation view. And this is just going to be a manual move. So I go down in the sort of bottom part of my south elevation view. Using my modify tab to select, I just do a big window around level one and level two. Not a bad idea, again, to use your filter just to confirm that you don't have anything else. So I have my two level lines. I click OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Move tool. I'm going to specify that my base point is right where level one is. And I'm just going to click there, drag up. And I'm going to enter 1269M. So remember, I just kind of roughly guessed that my main floor is going to be at 1,269 meters above sea level. So if I write 1269, remember to uh, include M, otherwise it's going to think you're talking about millimeters. And then I just hit enter. And now you'll see that my level datum lines are kind of blended in here with my topple surface. So ultimately, at some point when I start making my walls, my doors, my windows, I'll be able to do it. And they'll all just land at their actual geodetic meters above sea level that reflects what's going to happen with the real project. All right, so next step. Um, it will display something kind of obscure here. Notice that it's actually describing millimeters above sea level, which seems odd, and it is. Uh, we'll fix that later. There's another step that we're not going to get bogged down in to address that. It's okay where it is for now. So now, that, so that I can begin to kind of anticipate what the walls might look like, I'm just going to go back to my site floor plan view. And just so that I don't have to keep dealing with all of the extra clutter of this AutoCAD file, I'm going to draw some property lines. To do that, I'm going to go to the Massing and Site tab. And I'm going to use on the Modify Site panel the property line tool. And it'll ask me if I want to do this by distances and bearings, which is the complex sort of world of the survey engineer or the surveyor. Uh, or civil engineer. I'm just going to go for the second option, which is create by sketching. So I'll click create by sketch. And uh, just to keep the demo moving along quickly here, I'm just going to keep this really simple. And I'll take these two property lines on the side and then just quickly generate some additional straight lines here. There are a lot of little clicks that I'd need to do in here if I want to be more accurate. But again, for the sake of a quick demo, I'm just going to sketch these roughly. And the nice thing about this is once I've done this, I'll be able to shut off the AutoCAD file and not need to rely on it quite so much. Because I've kind of gotten the crucial information that I need from it at this point. I'll click on the green check. And there you can see my property lines. And now I can type in VG and hide the AutoCAD file. So on the Imported Categories tab, where it lists the DWG file here. I can uncheck that box and click OK. And once again, now I've got a much, much more simplified file. It will be a lot easier to deal with. So what I can see here, of course, are the property lines, the Revit topple surface, and then I've got the uh, elevation markers here in the survey and base point. I'm going to simplify this even further and use a quick command in Revit that just cuts the topple surface down to just the essential elements that I need. I can go to the Massing and Site tab again. And what I'm going to do is split the surface. On my site plan, I don't need to show several kilometers worth. I just need to show what's right around my property. So I'll click on Split Surface, select the topo surface. And I'm just going to make a quick, rough, simple rectangle around my property lines and click the green check. What that's done is it's isolated the outside edges uh, that weren't within the pink lines for my sketched uh, split surface uh, from what's inside. So now if I just click on what's outside and hit delete, or I could even hide it if I wasn't sure if it was the right uh, cropping. But in any event, now I've been uh, left with just something much, much easier to deal with, much simpler. And here again in the, in the 3D view, uh, I can just type in VG and hide the DWG file. All right, so this is going to make my life a lot easier. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add contour intervals so that I can see this and see the contours and see the change in topography a little bit more easily. To do that, I'm going to click here on the Site Settings button. 
which is this little arrow beside the model site panel text on the massing and site tab. And by default, I have only one sort of major contour element, and I'm going to add a second one. So to do that, I'm going to click here on the button that says Insert. And I want the stop point uh, for the uh, sort of display of my contour intervals to be 10 million, as in millimeters. So kind of like what I did with the extents on the site, I just want it to be able to show all the way up, and I'm not going to miss anything because the end point is going to be way above my site. The range type I have to change to multiple values. And I want the one that I just added to be secondary, and I want the top one to be primary. So now that I've got that set up, uh, one more here. I just want to add the, ink the stop for the secondary contours to be 10 million as well. So one and seven zeros. And I'm going to set the primary contour here to 500 millimeters. And then the secondary contour is going to display at 100 millimeters. So now when I click apply, you can see that it added more contour lines. So now I've got a little bit more detail here in anticipation of building a formal site plan. So now that I've got that all set up, uh, the next step is I want to create some walls that will roughly represent where my building is going to be. Again, I might not know exactly where the building is going to be. I'm just going to be sort of getting something in the file so that I can begin to kind of fine tune some of the views and other elements. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the architecture tab, click on the wall tool, and I'm going to make a wall on this kind of southwest face here that just sort of parallels the property line. So I'm going to, in the uh, draw tab or the draw panel here for creating the wall, I'm going to use pick lines. And I'm just going to start off with whatever it gives me. The default 200 millimeter wall is fine. And I want the base constraint for this wall to be at level one. I want the top constraint to be level two. Just keep it simple. Now that I've done that, if I just click here on the property line with an offset of, let's say, 15 meters, 15,000 millimeters. If I just hover here and click, you can see that it gives me a wall in that point. I'm going to create another set of walls, making sure that I have a nice orthogonal 90 degree building. So maybe I'll set these 20,000 millimeters away. And then I'll add some additional walls that would represent the northwest and the southeast part of the building. Again, just doing this really, really rough. I don't have any sort of idea about exactly what my building's going to be at this point. I just want to set things up so that I can begin drawing and get some more reliable elevations and other elements. So I'll look for that perpendicular snap. Now I've got a square rectangular-ish building here. And that rectangular building should be nicely located now so that I can see it when I go to my elevation views. Uh, here's what it's going to look like in uh, 3D. So now I've actually got some of my building elements being placed on the site. Now there's a few things that are going to get in the way of me having a really good sort of clear elevation view of this. If I was to go to the south elevation view now, you'd see that uh, my lines don't quite match up. The building's over here and my level datum lines are over here. To fix that, you can get a little closer by going to a 3D view. And this is a relatively new feature in Revit that the uh, level datum lines appear in a 3D view. But I'm just going to click on them and then use the grips to drag them so that they're closer to where my building is. So they'll be surrounding the building. And I'll have to do that with both of them. Uh, I'm not aware of any sort of alignment snaps here that would line each one up, the first to the second. So you just have to kind of eyeball this. So now that I've done this, I should be able to go to my elevation views and not necessarily see something perfect or completely accurately aligned, but it'll be a little bit closer than it was before. And there's the proof of that. So now uh, I'm getting closer to that point where I can just kind of start working and not have to worry about constantly managing geodetics and managing angles. So now that I've got my level lines a little bit closer to where the project is, and uh, again, I would have to do this in uh, all of my views. I should point this out as well. Notice how when I was in the south elevation view, uh, way up above here now is the 3D topple surface data from the DWG file. 
it's up there because I moved everything up. This actually sits now at about 2,000 meters above sea level. So don't be alarmed by that. This stuff is in the right spot. Uh, remember, at this point, we can just turn off the AutoCAD file or hide it. And uh, don't be alarmed by the fact that it looks like it's still sitting way above the site. All right, I'm not going to fine tune this uh, just for the sake of keeping the de demo moving along. Uh, what you would then do, of course, is you'd kind of pull these around so that they were a little bit closer to the building. But before I do that, I'm going to add one last little tweak here. Um, obviously, if I go to my self elevation view, that's not really a self elevation view. It's kind of splitting the building. So I want it to be perpendicularly aligned to the faces of the building. So to fix that, I'm going to go back to my site view. And um, actually, I'll do this in a level one floor plan view first. So notice that uh, this site plan shows true north. So in other words, this at the top of the page is where actual north is, compass north. And uh, my building is not properly aligned to that. So if I want to display a proper site plan, I want north typically to be true north to be at the top of the page. But this would be a real headache for creating stuff in Revit, making sure walls lined up and everything else if I was constantly worrying about this obscure angle. So I'm going to keep my site plan oriented towards true north. And I can do that over here on the left by just in the properties telling Revit that the orientation will be true north. It'll just keep looking the way that it's been looking. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my level one floor plan view where I'll see the walls of my building. And I'm also going to turn off the AutoCAD file. So I'll see the walls of my building and they're going to be at that same kind of obscure, kind of random looking angle just so that I don't have to constantly be adding windows and doors and walls at these strange angles, I'm going to tell Revit that this floor plan is actually going to be oriented towards Project North. So just confirm in the properties window that the orientation for this view is Project North. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Manage tab. And we're going to click on Position. And we're going to rotate Project North. When you click on Rotate Project North, it's going to ask you if you want to use these sort of preset easy increments, 90, 90, or 180, or if you want to use something in the file and align tr uh, Project North to something already there. So I'll take that option and click Align Selected uh, Line or Plane. And then all I have to do is just choose one of these walls that I created. And then you can see that what it does is it rotates the view, not necessarily the elements, just the view of them, so that now they're more orthogonally oriented. So if I click OK, if I want to maybe have the horizontal, or sorry, the longer uh, element be horizontal, I could just go through the same process and click Position, Rotate Project North, and Rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. And it'll, again, let me know what elements have been, uh, the view of what elements has been changed.